accounts of a certain particular entity are some of the most disturbing reports one could ever examine. The encounters with this entity have dated back centuries and have been permanently penned into various historical documents. Each culture or area that encountered this being had its own name for it. The Operator, the Tall Man, even Master. Today, it is most commonly known as Slender Man. In recent years, it's actually been a phenomenon that's been taking off and it's been pretty viral. It's even gotten to the point where the legend has its own video game being developed for it. However, its presence in history is certainly undeniable. There are many recorded accounts documenting encounters with this entity. One such disturbing account stemming from a German journal dating as early as 1702 writes, My child, my Lars, he is gone, taken from his bed. The only thing that we found was a scrap of black clothing. It feels like cotton, but it is softer, thicker. Lars came into my bedroom yesterday screaming at the top of his lungs that the angel is outside. I asked him what he was talking about and he told me some nonsense fairy story about the tall one. He said he went into the groves by our village and found one of my cows dead hanging from a tree. I thought nothing of it at first, but now he is gone. We must find Lars and my family must leave before we are killed. I am sorry, my son. I should have listened. May God forgive me. Despite different cultures attributing different names to this being, all descriptions of it share some very common traits. The Slender Man is described as being a tall man. In many reported experiences, it is said to have the appearance of wearing a black suit and maybe even a tie. Now there's an important distinction to be drawn here. If this being indeed wears a suit, it can be concluded that it has an awareness and some sort of intelligence. However, if it does not and it just seems to have the appearance of doing so, then it's hypothesized that it has a natural ability to merge in its surroundings and in this case that would be with our society, our culture. It may be why this entity has even been evasive for so many centuries despite an ever-evolving and ever-changing culture. It is also reported as having no eyes, no mouth, no hair, and no distinguishable facial features. Different reports describe it as ranging anywhere between 6 to 15 feet in height. Its behaviors vary from report to report. It has reportedly stalked victims in some cases for years. Psychological torture is a common tool this being employs, though any definite particular reason as to why it does what it does is anyone's best guess. The only general certainty that can be drawn from this entity's behavior is that it is malevolent. Now, there was actually an interesting list compiled which described potential traits of the Slender Man. This list was compiled after there were a number of burning buildings with unknown causes that had several deaths and a few surviving witnesses. Now, these traits are listed in a sort of chronological order. And this is what that list says. Slender Man will find interest in a victim for reasons unknown. It would then contact the victim, and if it is a child, it'll present itself as friendly. The adults he stalks have a common trait. They have all been through a terrible tragedy in their life, even if the tragedy was made by Slender Man directly. 
If the victim is an adult, it would stalk the victim for long amounts of time, causing what is known as slender sickness. Now, slender sickness causes massive paranoia, nosebleeds, nightmares, hallucinations appearing only to the sick person, and many other dangerous symptoms. Eventually, and this is where it gets disturbing, eventually it would abduct the victim into whatever nearby forest there may be, where they would be killed. In messy cases, it may remove evidence of its existence by causing fire of their home, place of work, or school. Now here's one of the more recent findings about Slenderman, and this, this can get pretty, pretty disturbing. Slenderman uses, or is at least thought to use, what are called proxies. Now these proxies, they, they are people that behave in really, really strange ways. Oftentimes it is described as if they behave in ways that make them appear as if they are possessed. It is a kind of psychosis. However, it is unknown whether this psychosis is simply them speaking for themselves or if it is actually a slender man pulling the strings. In its most generalized form, you can consider these proxies insane individuals that are apparently under its control or influence. Now this is because these proxies tend to act based on what this entity might want or need. It's sort of like servants. Now the idea is that these people do all the physical interaction for it. Quite significantly here is the idea that it, they might even destroy or even leave evidence for it. They may even serve as sort of a communication medium, which is really disturbing considering the potential forms of media that they can communicate through. Because this includes creating any sort of electronic media to communicate with whomever they might feel the need to. So it might be possible that there are videos or files out there with communication from it. This idea, it kind of brings you as close as possible to this, as directly as possible as you can get. One final point, you cannot choose to be a proxy. There are reports or accounts in which people have tried where they've wanted to but it doesn't work that way. In short, it chooses you, you do not choose it. And that, I think, is probably one of the scariest aspects of this entire thing. Apparently there are organizations tracking it, however not much is known about this as one would suspect. In fact, it's even to the point where one of the organizations is literally just called the organization. It's been given aliases such as Optic Nerve, the Unknown Organization, the Bureau, and even the Anti-S Walker Unit. But all in all, it's just an unnamed organization. One report states that there was an interview with a detective. This detective did not state where he worked from, he only stated that they were based in Washington in the United States. Based on these reports, it is known that the organization pretty much knows about as much as we do when it comes to the Slender Man. However, some extra information includes that they refer to Slender Man as a serial killer whenever they are talking to civilians. They have been researching this entity for many years. They believe he has killed and that he's active through, throughout the nation and they do not know how to neutralize him. But beyond that, there is very little known about this organization. There's actually another very interesting foundation that very little is known about. The foundation itself is called SCP. 
This foundation's initials stand for Secure, Contain, Protect. What they essentially do is they find anomalous objects, objects that are considered not to belong in physical reality or in nature, and they contain them because these objects might be seen as a threat to the stability of our existence. The items they contain are actually referred to as SCPs, and this foundation has actually contained an SCP that is often thought to be the Slender Man because of its nature and the way it works. This SCP is called SCP-582. Its alias is Bundle, and here's a description directly from the SCP archives. SCP-582 is an adaptive, self-propagating meme in the form of an entity most often referred to as blank. It's blanked out. SCP-582's primary ability is passive reality modification. Any fictional account written about SCP-582 will become a factual record of a manifestation of the entity in which SCP-582 will carry out all actions attributed to it in the narrative. These manifestations will happen at whatever time and place is specified. If no specific location or time is given, the manifestation will occur at any opportunity that will meet the narrative's criteria. Now here's what's really interesting about how they are handling this, and for this reason we are here in the video solely referring to this SCP by a factual name in which no narrative can be established. This is how they're handling it. It says, All major internet search engines are to be monitored for any references to SCP-582 under any of its known names. Copies of all media relating to SCP-582 are to be stored in Secure Archive 582. The original sources of these materials and all records regarding the individuals responsible for the creation of such are to be expunged as outlined in Document 582-RP. Now here are the specifics of how this relates to Slenderman. This SCP has been noted to share some abilities as Slenderman. For example, it appears or disappears at any place or at any time. But according to the SCP Foundation, Slenderman does not exist. And that's probably one of the more fascinating reasons. In the past decade, there have been increased reportings of encounters with the Slender Man. There is one interesting connection to note with another reported entity known as the Rake. Now, the Rake gives off what is known as Sigma Radiation. This is a type of energy signature that was unknown when it was first discovered and it's still under investigation. This energy signature is not exactly radiation, but there was no other way to name it. It was something that was unknown. It was something new. And so Sigma radiation was given as a way to label it and to identify it. This was found in the bloodstream of victims of the rake. What's interesting here, and its connection to Slenderman, is that Slenderman, in one or two cases, maybe a few, left behind what was a sort of fabric, a piece of cloth. And this cloth gave off that very same energy signature. Now, more information will be compiled for a future summary video of what the rake is. But because of all of this, it is thought that there is some relation between the Slender Man and the Rake. There have even been mentions of a modern cult who worships the Slender Man, who see him as some sort of holy being and that his actions are a blessing. The Slender Man is certainly one of the most notorious entities in existence. Quite possibly the most disturbing aspect of investigating the Slender Man 
is the inexact nature of its origin. Its malevolent, mysterious nature is one that garners a lot of deserved attention. This is what we know so far. There is still much to learn. New information is acquired and new hypotheses posed as further investigation is done. However, the costs of the little we find out are great, for there have been a startling number of victims and disappearances in recent times. Yet all information is valuable, for if we do not know or understand how this entity operates, its motives, its purpose, how could we ever hope to escape it should we be misfortunate enough to encounter the Slender Man for ourselves?